Hello vinyl people, Jeff here. Uh, it's been a while since I've done an actual vinyl update, but I just have not lucked out with finding records lately. But I finally have some to show. Not a whole lot, but a few very cool things that I got on Sunday. Um, for those of you that live in the United States, uh, we celebrated Mother's Day here on Sunday, and I had a very good day. We went up to New York and got to spend some time with the family and everything, so that was very, very nice. And I also did briefly stop in West Sider Records. And if they have a website, and I think they do, I will link it in the description below, and you can go check them out if you're in uh, the area of New York City. It's a very cool store. It's not what I would consider a great record store just because, <clears throat> you know, they didn't have new selections. The, uh, you know, the stuff that they did have, some of it was in questionable condition and stuff like that. But it was really a great digging spot. That's what I would call it because there, were, there was just a vast amount of stuff to choose from. It just very cool store to go to. So if you're in that area, I highly recommend it. Um... So I have a few things I got there, but first what I want to show are two jazz records that I picked up from a street vendor. There was just a guy uh, that set up shop on the sidewalk, and he had a lot of books and records. And the records were highly priced. They were $5 each, which isn't bad, but for the stuff that he had, that was way too much for almost all of it. Um, you know, just completely scrappy Barbra Streisand, Barry Manilow that sort of stuff in really horrible condition for $5. So most of it wasn't worth it, but I did find two very cool jazz records that I'm happy to get. Uh, the first one is Paris Impressions by Errol Garner. I haven't listened to this one yet, but uh, Errol Garner is a piano player, and this is on <laughs> the Colombian 6i. So whenever I see something on that label, I have to get it. And I do have one other El Errol Garner LP called, um, I think it's called That's My Kick. And I don't remember it doing a whole lot for me, but I'm still excited to listen to this one. And it's in very nice shape considering how old it is. So very cool to get that. And I also got Scales by the Manfred Schuff Quintet. Uh, this is on ECM. And it's just in remarkable condition, still in the, uh, still in the shrink, and except for that little cutout there, really mint copy, very happy to get it. I haven't spun it yet, but anything on ECM, I'm probably going to like, so cool to get that. And the rest of these finds were things that I got at West Sider Records, and... I found three things, there was a, a giant wall that he had of one dollar records and most of them were classical and I was thinking about getting some but I, I really haven't delved into my personal classical collection yet so I figured I'd you know do more of that before I continue to expand it but I think the specialty of this store is probably classical by the way there is a, a very large selection of classical but anyway I found some funk records in the one dollar section so Nothing too unique here, but very cool considering I paid only a dollar for all of it. So first is the Isaac Hayes movement, and I have not had a chance to spin any of these one dollars, uh, one dollar records yet. And this is uh, Gatefold, and it's on Enterprise, and I don't know, I really like the way the Enterprise label looks. So very happy to get something on that label. I also got the Blackbirds, and uh, this is also a gatefold, and it's on the Fantasy label. So I'll show the gatefold real quick. And last on the $1 records, I got Euphrates River by The Main Ingredient. And from what I understand, all of these are funk records, and my funk collection is small. so. Very happy to get all these, and actually this is a gatefold as well. Actually, almost every record I got was a gatefold, so very cool. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm excited to listen to some of these $1 records, but it might be a little while until I get to them just because I haven't had a whole lot of time to listen to records lately. Um, up next, what you've been hearing in the background 
Uh, Flash. Some of you uh, Prague listeners probably recognize this one. This came out in 72, I believe, and it features uh, Peter Banks from Yes and Tony Kaye from Yes. So, as, as you might expect, this sounds a lot like early Yes. I mean, you know, if you listen to this, it's, it's that same sort of raw, progressive rock that you heard on, like, the first Yes album. That's really what this, this album reminds me of so far. But I'm only on my first spin, and I'm enjoying it quite a lot. This isn't a great copy, in fairness. You know, it's kind of worn and whatever, but it was $5, and I've just been looking for this for so long that I had to pick it up. So, very cool to get that. And last is the crowning jewel of Sunday's Dig, and that is Joe's Garage Act 1 by Frank Zappa. I absolutely love Joe's Garage. It's a it's an off the wall kind of rock opera about a government that makes music illegal and it follows the life of this guy named Joe and you know lots of crazy stuff happens and it's really just silly as you would expect from Zappa but this is one of his best albums in my opinion and I'm so happy that I finally got Act 1 on vinyl. I would really love to get Act 2 and 3, but I just haven't found uh, a good copy of it for a decent price. So, I'm happy to get this. I would really like Act 2 and 3, but I'll keep an eye out for it. And this is on uh, Zappa Records, of course. So, this was the crowning jewel for me. I just... I'm an absolute Zappa freak. Whenever I can find some on vinyl for a decent price, I'll definitely pick it up. So that was uh, all my vinyl finds from Sunday. Nothing too special, but some very cool things, uh, you know, considering I only had like 20 minutes to look. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this, and if you did, uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of some of these records. And thank you for watching.